YouTube Oz it going the Goat House is back with what to watch this season when it comes to the Miami Dolphins. Seems like the main talking points with them right now to his extension. Uh, can they be a healthy team all year long into the most important portion of the season? And then can two and the Dolphins play better in the big moments? Uh, against the biggest team, the best teams. Can they do a little bit better? That's where they've been a little underwhelming. But we're going to break down some things here when it comes to what to expect, players, games, and more. Some things that maybe people aren't talking about. But uh, first comment, we'll decide which team I do next. We have a playlist on the channel full of the videos, the teams that we have done. Number three on the what to watch list, they have, a, they have potential to have an elite secondary. I think people are kind of missing that right now. I think that secondary is going to be better than what people think. Uh, I think people realize Javon Holland's a stud and can continue to get better, their safety. Uh, I think what people realize is Jalen Ramsey once was the top corner in football, but I think that's where people leave it, and they think that's all he was. Like, it's kind of old news, uh, but I would disagree. It's going to be the first year on the Dolphins where he's playing, we hope, is playing the, the entire season. I, I don't think he's anywhere near, like, that wash label or declining. I think he's that good at a corner, and I think uh, what they've added kind of helps around him in the secondary, kind of helps him as well. So I think he can play very well. And then they add two new pieces. It almost feels like Ram Ramsey in a way is a new piece, even though he was there at the end of the year. But uh, at safety with Javon Holland, they will have Jordan Poyer, who's, yeah, maybe he's declining a little bit, but still very good. A smart, veteran, tough safety, um, you know, who knows uh, – the AFC East. He's been playing for the Bills uh, every year, so going to play that. You know, he's going to play the Bills twice uh, this year. That should be interesting. And they had Kendall Fuller at corner, another smart, consistent veteran corner. Uh, I actually thought that was one of the better value contracts of free agency. So it was a great job by them. So that feels like a pretty good, complete secondary. Um, which is better than people think. It has a chance because the talent, because the balance, because. I think it's a smart, consistent group is what I when I look at that, and that's fantastic. So I think it has a chance to be a really good group. Another thing that I notice as is is that I think they can run more variety of coverages with this group, which is where they were kind of heading, what the Dolphins wanted, I should say, and now where they're at. Um, you know, for so long they were run, they were a heavy man coverage uh, defense, and they had the guys that kind of fit that. Xavier Howard was you know better than that. Um, and they were good at in man, but it kind of got predictable um, you know, at a certain point. And then last year, last offseason, they added Jalen Ramsey. It feels like they're kind of gearing to add a little bit more zone because it's just better. You know, it's where the NFL is heading. You have to mix it up a bit. Uh, and now I think they kind of finished that. Now, is it a long-term solution? You know, maybe not because maybe Poyer's not going to be around forever. Maybe Ramsey's not going to be around forever. But for this year, it's kind of – they hit their goal, in my opinion. They're, they're going to be able to run a variety of more coverages. They're going to add more zone uh, to this defense, which is fantastic. It, it, we're In today's game, it's fantastic. You know, Fuller was great in cover four in, in, in Washington. Uh, Ramsey was great. Yeah, same thing. You know, cover four, cover three um, when he was in, in L.A. Poyer, Poyer was great in cover two. Um, in Buffalo, Holland, I feel where he's at in his career, I think he can do about anything, uh, and a lot. I think Ramsey can as well. So, uh, I think it's fantastic to what they have in that group. And then adding Anthony Weaver can only only help with the entire defense, not specifically the secondary I'm talking about, but um, the entire defense. You know, you know where his background, where he comes from. You know, look at the Ravens; they mix it up a little bit as well. Um, so definitely something I'm looking forward to. Sticking with the defense, and this maybe won't be the case right away because they will have some guys trying to come back from injuries but it feels like they have unlimited pass rushers especially off the edge I know Bradley Chubb it's going to take some time for him to come back but he will be back at some point this year Jalen Phillips looks to be uh progressing pretty well recently saw him work you know a video of him working out and he looks to be in really good shape and it's a guy that could bounce back uh you know from an injury so there's a chance he's ready for week one but uh they draft chop Robinson who I love. I was a big fan of Robinson. Yeah, he's a little raw. You wish there was a little bit more strength. Some of those big bully tackles kind of gave him some issues with, with power. Um, and maybe he could add a, a little bit more of a collection, a collection of moves if we're nitpicking. Uh, but a good situation where he's not starting. He's not out there. Uh, or he'll start some games probably. But he's not out there a ton. Of, you know, a ton. He's got good guys to learn from. Uh, but that guy has things you cannot coach. 
the athletic freak that he is, the explosive freak that he is, the best get off I have seen maybe ever from a prospect edge rusher, which you can't coach those things. So how he explodes off the ball, a lot of fun. They have Shaq Barrett, who feels like just a year or two ago, like he was known as a very solid edge rusher too, you know, with his production getting after the quarterback. Um, you know, he had a pick six this past year as well. Uh, that helped them win the game. You know, a guy that can drop in coverage. They, they draft Mo Camara as well, who's been productive in his college career. So they, you know, once the full group's out there, even before even before Chubb's back, they have a deep, good group. But what I love is that they're all different to me. Like, they all fit the defense. They all fit Anthony Weaver's defense. But they're all, they all, they're all like different styles to me. You look at, you know, Phillips, Chubb. Uh, Shaq Barrett, Chop Robinson, many of those four guys, like they all, to me, they're all like their strengths are just, they're different. They all have different styles. They're all pretty scheme versatile too. I think any four of those guys could fit either scheme. And we know what the Dolphins are trying to run. Mainly Barrett, I guess, has been in the three, four his whole career, but these are do it all type guys. Uh, you look at Weaver, him coming from Baltimore. Uh, I liked what they did with their simulated pressures, which is basically, you know, having a pass rusher drop in coverage. Uh, yeah, pretty often, quite often, and you know, not too much, but and then and then rushing someone else in their place, whether it's a linebacker or a safety. And I do think the Dolphins have the ammo, they have the weapons, they have the personnel to do that. So I do think they they fit they fit that. Where, um, yeah, I got any of those guys, any of those pass rushers. I I I, I think they can drop in coverage, and they have some linebackers that are capable of blitzing. We can see Holland. Uh, you know them using him in different ways. He, you know he's a could be a downfield coverage guy, guy or be in the backfield. Uh, even in their depth, you know, could a guy like a raw prospect from a few years ago out of Georgia, Channing Tindall, could he finally step up? Again, was a raw prospect, but he was extremely good at blitzing. Um, you know, could he be part of that rotation? So, but looking at those pass rushers, they do so many different things. They can be involved in so many different ways. You could have different rotations every week. You're just really throwing off opposing offenses in their game plan. So that's my favorite part about this. And you look at the defensive front too, Clay is. Camel's a good pass rush. They have multiple guys up there. Mainly was focusing on the edge. But that's my favorite part is they have so many different scenarios. They're, it's a versatile group. I think they have the pieces. They have the tools for the specific types of defense, specific type of plays that Weaver wants to run um, from top to bottom, really. So I do love that. Um, and then we're going to talk about like Wilkins, the chain. Well, I kind of want to reveal number one. Number one, I think uh, another step up is very realistic. And there's so many parts to that. Uh, that make me want to talk about that, why that's a big talking point. But I do think, start with Christian Wilkins, I do think, and it kind of goes into the second part, and the other parts we talked about as well, but I think people think because they lost Christian Wilkins, oh, that's a, that's a gut punch, it's tough, they might take a step down because of that, and I can't really disagree with those statements. But I'd also say not so fast based on did they... If you look at it as a whole, did they actually get worse? Because you lose a possibly a star player in Christian Wilkins. It's tough. But you do have Calais Campbell, not the same player. He's aging, but he's still decent. Um, so it's you got to replace it. Yeah, we talked about guys they've added. They added all other all guys like Jordan Brooks, you know, other pretty decent players as well. So it wasn't just the guys I was talking about. So, but. Uh, you know, maybe the linebacker unit's better, but we talk about the extreme depth they have in terms of the edge rush group. It's a really strong edge rush group, and I know some of those guys might not be back right away. And then we talked about the secondary is definitely better. They had two big time pieces, uh, veteran, smart, consistent pieces, but it's more than just adding those pieces. Now, like I talked about, you're able to do more things in the secondary secondary because of that. So you the trade off. Wilkins gone. Deeper, better edge room, probably better linebacker room, definitely better secondary. I, I guess debatable. Long term, I think I would side with you. Probably would rather have Christian Wilkins because how long will some of these other guys be around? And Wilkins has got still got upside, but not really what we're talking about. Just for this year, how good they could be. I kind of like that trade off. The more I'm thinking of it, so they actually maybe maybe because I really look at that secondary. Uh, maybe they took a step up because of that. But also, look at Mike McDaniel. It's his third year coach of the Miami Dolphins, the first year to the second year. I think there was steps up. Um, they were very solid both years, and they were capable of much more at the end of the year, but because of uh, major injuries, that held them short of what they could possibly ac- possibly have accomplished. Uh, but I think there was a step up last year. I think it looked a little more organized last year. I they were smoother. They showed off more of their versatility and, and uh, 
explosiveness, athleticism, their speed last year, their different weapons, uh, how tough of a game plan were they. They showed that more, especially right when the season started through a first half of the year. I mean, they were a dominant force at that point. Tua, who we'll talk about more in this video, looked like an MVP candidate at the start, you know, so... I think it's pretty realistic that like there's a the, my question is is there a trend? We hope there's a trend. Is there a trend? Is there a pattern? Are they heading in that direction where it's only up from here? Uh, I think it's very possible. The more you think about it like that, uh, and the different weapons they've had, they've we've uh, a chan just got started in that in that offense last year. The way Mostert played was fantastic. They had Jalen Wright, who's my was my running back two in the draft, super explosive. I I think he has uh uh, I mean, it's it's the very max ceiling. I'm not saying he's going to be that guy, but a Jonathan Taylor type vibe, probably not going to be as good as him, but I think he has those vibes to me, uh, what he can become. Um, you know, the speed that they have, what they've added to the defense. The coaching, again, should be a lot better. Vic Fangio, if we're talking like three, four years ago, Vic Fangio's better, but that old school stuff maybe doesn't really work anymore. Uh, where the offense, I mean, look at Mike McDaniel's offense. It was kind of where he came from, plus his own twist on it. It's new school stuff. It's a new era with these explosive, fast, high-powered pass attack offenses. Uh, a guy like Weaver is going to fit that a little bit more. So um, it's still to be determined how good of a defense coordinator he is, but I feel pretty good about being a step up because of today's era where we are today. But another big part of my number one thing there is Tua Tungavailoa, and we're going to kind of touch on that in a second here. Um, but players to watch, Devon A. Chan, got to throw in him in, the, in there. He was much more of a factor, much more of a game changer, much more of a presence that I think anyone thought he would be. I think people liked him a lot out of, you know, of A&M because he was, he was so fast. He's explosive, but how involved can he be? Is he like a gadget? Is he a here and there weapon? And he was so much more than that with the Miami Dolphins. It was a factor with him and Mostert and switching these guys off. Teams really didn't know what to do. Like, what the hell? How do we game plan for this? Um, he's got to stay healthy. He does have a thinner frame, but I thought he put on some uh, mass, specifically muscle last year, uh, more than I expect anybody to be able to do. So that's a good sign as well. But is he more of a factor? Does he stay healthy? Does he step up? Or, you know, it's a big, some big questions. How much a factor is Jalen Wright? I would love for him to be a, in there and be a factor because I think he's that good and he fits this offense very well. So how are these three running backs used? But Achan, he started way ahead of schedule, just really about staying healthy. So where is he going to be this year? Because he is a factor, a game-changing factor. Number two, I'm going to go Javon Holland because Javon Holland's already known as one of the one of the better. Like no one really puts him at the very top. Like no one's putting him in the Winfield um, discussions. But I think that can he can be there with this season. Like how, it's scary to think how because he was ahead of schedule right when he came in as well. Remember Javon Mareg, The consensus was he was for sure better, but it's been not really not close uh, from that draft class. Uh, and then different things that Javon Holland can do. Like he can play single high free if you need him to. Um, he can be a playmaker in the back end. Um, we, we saw that throughout his young career already. Um, he can line up anywhere. He doesn't need to be free. He doesn't need to be single high. He can play a split scheme. He can play up in the box. He can get in the backfield and be a slasher, you know, down downhill guy. Those types of safeties are the best safeties of football. Those types of safeties are getting paid in today's NFL for a reason. So he could be that guy. Like he could be in a – I think people think he's great and he's on his way, but I think with this season under Anthony Weaver with the secondary, I think he could be that elite guy. So I'm curious to see if he makes that jump. But, yeah, kind of going back to the different variety of things they can run, I think that Javon Holland's the cornerstone, like that piece of that. We talked about, like you know, they bring in Poyer, who's been a very smart cover two guy, Fuller. Played more than cover four, but I thought that's where he stood out. And in Ramsey, uh, with the Rams, I th again, I thought like cover four and cover three is where he really stood out, but he can shadow a guy. And the Holland, I think, can do anything. So we're going to have different looks with, again, him at split safety with Poyer, what, what Poyer is familiar with. You could have looks with um, Holland in the back end by himself and maybe Poyer's you know, in the box or vice versa. Like You can do to so many different things here, so I'm excited about that. Uh, with Javon Holland. And then number one, you got to go to a tongue of Iloa. Um, yeah, a small part of this is because he's playing for a contract, possibly unless he gets it. Uh, what is he worth? A lot of questions. Can he step up? Can he stay healthy? And these are legitimate questions still, but kind of going back to what I had as number one, what to watch, a big piece of that was to a tongue of Iloa. Think about when he first came in the league and, and, and how he looked. What was the label everyone was getting giving him? Bust. They should have taken Herbert. They blew it. 
people were calling him like borderline a bust. They really were. And then he started to get a little bit better. He had some injuries. What were people labeling him? Like, oh, he might he might be something, but he's not going to be able to stay healthy. He needs to retire or things like that. And then he played, you know, he kind of proved that he still needs to prove that wrong, but I thought he could took a step in that direction last year. And he took another step up. He kept taking steps up. It, in terms of his talent, his skill. I mean, hell, he was in the MVP conversation, not at the end, but through a portion of last season, and he looked that good, um, you know, and and it's just more and more time. He's getting better. He's fitting Mike McDaniel's offense. They're getting more and more of the weapons. Uh, Sometimes, you know, down the stretch, besides there being injuries, I felt like the offense, the defense couldn't really get on the same page at the same time. I think that could be solved this year as well. Uh, Another reason they could take a step up, but I mean, it shouldn't really be a surprise. Like Tua could get better with more reps, just being that player that he's supposed to be that he is. It's just like players typically that are supposed to be good, that have the talent in them, that are still young, still getting, you know, still learning. Typically they get better. So I don't think that's being talked about enough. So there is a chance that the Dolphins as a whole get better, but it's, it's, um, it's a lot of pieces have to play a part. You know, does Weaver actually make the defense better? Um, do, do the pass rushers come back in a you know timely manner? Uh, do they hopefully they don't miss Christian Wilkins too much? Uh, does Tua take another step up? And then the health of all these guys: Tua, A. Chan, Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddle. I think a bit of if there was something that's going to stop this team, I think mainly it's it's it, if there was something to stop the team, I think it's the durability, the health, or the offensive line. Something we haven't touched on yet. I know some of the fans had takes on that. Uh, I, I don't think it's going to crush them, though. Maybe that could be what stops them, like in the, like deep in the playoffs. It, it could maybe maybe it's not good enough for that time. But some games I'm watching. I like the Seahawks game in Week Three in Seattle. The Seahawks are a better than better team than people think, especially in Week Three. They're going to be tough. It's a whole new. We're all used to the same old Seahawks team. It's a whole new team. Uh, the systems, everything on both sides of the ball. It's gonna, it might look like a college style offense at times on offense, and Mike McDonald is so good uh, on, on on defense. So I, that's a that's kind of a trap game in week three for Miami. That's gonna be a really good game. And then the big question with them, looking at last year, they couldn't really handle the big time teams, some of the Cowboys uh, last year. So. And late in the year, it seems like they kind of go south a little bit in the wrong time of the year, probably because of the injuries. It is very likely what it is, like 99.99% chance. That's what it's been. Uh, But uh, let's see what they got. Week 15, week 17, crunch time at Texans, uh, Niners. A lot of coaching connections here. Seahawks, Mike McDonald, Anthony Weaver. Uh, Texans, D'Amico, Ryan's, Mike McDaniel, 49ers, Mike McDaniel comes for comes from. So that's kind of bonuses why these are good. And obviously the divisional games, I don't put the divisional games up here because it's like too obvious. Uh, but Bills, Jets, like th- these games are going to be massive, massive. Uh, then some fans takes, uh, answer not. And then Vitor was part of his discussion as well. Pass pro, keep it two on the field. Yeah, that's really the, the big worry. Um, that is the big word. The offensive line is it better? Is it worse? I don't know if it could be any better. I mean, if Armstead stays healthy the whole season, then that'd be fantastic. True running back committee. I'm very curious to see how they divide that up. Um, but it's a good group. I don't think it really. It's like a team where it doesn't matter. There's some teams that I think rotate the running back. Some running back for the most part is a position where you kind of got to get going. Like get the guy going, get the guy going. You can't just give him a carry or two carries and sit him. You know get going, but the Dolphins are a team I feel good about that. Like, them mixing it up, it really throws teams off. Um, So I love that. Defensive coaching changes, adjustments. Yeah, we kind of touched on that, something I'm very excited about. D-line rotation and health. Um, Yeah, we touched on that as well, just really about being healthy. Kind of Fuller, Jordan, Poirier revamp in the secondary. Yeah, love that because they bring different things. They've add more. It's more than just adding themselves. Like, they're adding more to this defense. The coverage is uh, full season Ramsey should be huge. Kicking, I didn't really touch on that. Yeah, Sanders, a liability. Yeah, once was uh, known as one of the better kickers, so will that be a thing? I think that's a question for anybody. At any time, like, besides maybe the Ravens, but any time kickers kind of can just go south or get better again, like, it's weird. Um, and then Vitor agrees with what he said. Uh, I would also add McDaniel using the run more, maybe more and more consistent. That's a knock for me. It's a good point. It's a knock for me with McDaniel because the run will be you be, the run will be working and he'll kind of kind of go he'll he'll go back to it. Like that's 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 the knock. Like he has a process before the game, and, and he kind of sticks to that. He doesn't really adjust based on what different or weird things or unexpected things happening within the game. 
that's something you need to get better on. And there's been teams that just cannot stop the run and they just kind of go away from the run or that's really not enough of the game plan. If a team cannot stop the run or really struggle to stop the run, it's such an easy way to beat that team. You can control the clock and everything. Like you, you, you run the damn ball. I know people kind of get mixed up because it's a passing league, but it does not mean you do not run the ball. It does not mean if you if you can beat a team by running the ball, because that's their weakness. You go away from it like that. So that is the biggest knock on McDaniel, uh, Weaver in defensive versatility, and Jordan Brooks. Yeah, Brooks another guy that's got to stay healthy, but he still has some upside there. We talked about defensive versatility, the different looks, simulated pressures will be pretty big. Uh, it, it, that seems to be the way uh, in today's NFL. Uh, so we'll see if he if he uh, if he runs that type of defense where he comes from. Um, yeah, Brooks. They've added Brooks. That could could that be a bigger addition than we think? Um, will Tua take over games and carry the team? Uh, I don't think he needs to. I don't think there's ever going to be a point where Tua carried that team, and that's just fine. But we'll see. Will the offense adjust and impose their games better against better teams? Yeah, that's something that's big. Like that. They beat up on the bad teams. They really beat up on them, but uh, they need to be better against the better teams this year, obviously. Um, will the defense continue to take a step even with the loss of Wilkins by adding DB help? And the, Yeah, so that's kind of the stuff I was talking about too. When, when they lost Wilkins, I'm, I'm thinking, even just a month ago, I'm thinking this defense is probably worse, but after doing a deep dive here and really looking, I'm like, it kind of fits to what they really want to do more now than ever. Uh, they've added more elsewhere. They're going to be able to mix it up like I talked about. So some hope there. Running back room with Jalen Wright. Yeah, I'm very curious to see how. Maybe we won't see a ton of him right away. Maybe nothing from him right away. I think we'll end up seeing a bit as the year goes on. But I, they really set them. Like that's the future moster. They set themselves up for the near future with uh, Wright and Acham. Uh, Andrew, uh, well, first let's go to Cam Sullivan at the top right there. Veteran additions to already. Solid defense revamp secondary. Yep, we touched on that. It's people are noticing like these are pretty good things here. Different O line than last year. Yeah, how how is this O line gonna hold up? Um, can this team be good teams? That's yeah, in big games. It's just the big, big thing. I, that's the thing. That's why I think they could step up. Last year I don't think they could. I doubted them all year. I mean, they, I doubted them to beat the Cowboys. They beat the Cowboys. Uh, but can can they? I think this year is where that's where they could take a step up. I think they could do a little bit better. It's I think it's the matter of kind of getting used to playing the bigger teams. Like it almost hurt them that they played the softer teams early last year. That almost hurt them in a way. Debatable, but um running back receiver rotation take. They start the year seven and three or eight and two, but go three and four down the stretch and barely make the seven seed. That's realistic. I mean, looking at what they've done in the past. Near near the near pass. Uh Andrew O D line player are the only real concerns if those can't stay get healthy. I think the Dolphins will have to win shootouts with uh little time to throw. Tua has gotten better every year. So there you go. Yeah, Tua has gotten better every year, but the team believes in him to succeed like that. I think they would have paid him by now. Yeah. That's yeah, that's a good point as well. Like what's the re- I guess we don't know. Maybe what's the reason they haven't paid him yet? I think perfect world you don't pay him yet and he knows he has to go out and prove something and then therefore he has to go prove something so he plays well uh but also it's a little bit of a mystery on how much he's worth that's like one of those I can go I could take like any player and go like he's worth this it's probably going to be a little range I give you not an exact number but Tua it's like it's so up in the air so it is a good point though like what's the hold up I hope it's what I said like they just want to see him play this year um we will see um Bloons, uh, this is my only question, concern. I, I love Mike McDaniel, best offense head coach in my lifetime, but he needs to stop with the predictability. He trusts Tua. It's time he shows his trust. Um, play calling needs much more variety, especially in the big games moments. Yeah, I, I kind of touched on that uh, with astronauts takes or somebody's takes, uh, Vitor's takes. Um, yeah, just... He's a little stubborn. That's what it is. I saw it in year one, too. I think I touched on it multiple times. Like, he's a little stubborn, like, kind of staying in his, stuck in his ways or staying with the pregame process, the pregame thoughts. Um, he's got to be able to adjust. It'd be better situational, I suppose. Understand that you have to. You can't do the same thing every week, but you have to you have to understand your opponent. That's the main thing with him. So there's definitely should be some frustration there, but third year only. Like I think 
that's where I think he could get better. So we'll see. Uh, Adam, what will the running back rotation look like? Yeah, I'm very curious. Uh, I It has to start with Mostert starting and A-Chain getting a good load coming in. Maybe not a whole lot of right right away, but kind of get mixed mixed in. Maybe they're going to give Mostert some breathers, uh, you know, if there starts to, sh- starts to show sign of wears. And with A-Chain, I mean, there, there's a scenario where they both could be hurt. They still have Jeff Wilson, who's pretty solid. But we don't, we don't hope, we hope we don't see both those guys hurt, but it's possible. So it's really good they have Jalen Wright. How will downgrade O line and D line play? Uh, I don't think it's much of a downgrade either one. It could be a little bit, but I think again the D line thing could get made made up for by the the secondary. For an example, can rookies Chop Robinson, Patrick Paul, uh, two players I was very high on the draft process, step up? I definitely think so. Robinson will evolve in different ways. Um, He's going to win reps just based off his athleticism and his get off. So like he's got to be out there at times. And Patrick Paul, a little raw, but he has the traits you definitely look for, but he does have experience. So it's not like he's completely raw. He's just raw because you got to refine some things and you, it's a guy you just want to work with. He's there. He was drafted uh, maybe a little earlier than his tapes had because of what he can become because of his traits. But um, I think you hope we don't see him right away because that would mean someone else is injured. Uh, but I definitely think we'll see Chop Robinson, but interesting. Take offense, defense decline. Dolphins go 9-8. and eight. HM becomes running back one by the end of the year. Um, I mean, I could see it. it it's hard to predict record because every there's going to be surprises, upsets early in the year. But I could see them going 9-8 and eight pretty much for that reason because anything can happen. But I, I think they'll be better than that. If they were in, were nine, if they end up 9-8, I'm going to predict that they'll, they'll probably look better. They actually are better than what that record shows. HN becomes running back one by the end of the year. Here's my take with HN. I think I said this when the when the Dolphins drafted uh, Jalen Wright. I don't, and I could be wrong. It's kind of maybe a bold. I don't think it's that bold, but I think people will view it as bold. I don't know if HN ever becomes like a running back one like starting running back for the Dolphins and I shouldn't really say it like that because there's a game this year he's going to start maybe the first play he's going to be on the field but I I think he is that high-end rotational piece that really like weapon unique weapon that no one has I I think it's Mostert HN Wright when Jalen Wright is the Mostert replacement when he's gone or he's injured I think Wright hops him then my take I think I think highly of Wright I think highly of HN as well it's just like the style back he is. But even if that's the case, HN could have more snaps in games. So I'm not saying he he won't. Wright could start in the future. HN could actually have more snaps in games depending on the, the opponent uh, in the situational stuff. Uh, but HN could feel like their best back, like their running back one. That's definitely very extremely possible. So Dolphins are an interesting team, more interesting than I thought. I'm glad, uh, glad I do this vi- these uh, videos because it's AFC is so loaded though. So it's going to be a fight. Fight to win the division, fight to make the playoffs. But um, yeah, that'll do it for this one. Check out the playlist full of these videos. We are getting, we're definitely over 20 teams or so right now. Uh, check out our sponsor, Liquid IV code GOAT for a percentage off. Always adding new flavors there. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.